Welcome to Brilliantly British, my name is Lawrence and today I'm going to show you how to make chicken complete. If you've never heard of it before, that's because it's our own creation, our own invention that we are going to share with you. So as we share it with you, sit back, relax with a cup of tea in hand, putting your feet up too and enjoy this episode. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. I find it hard to believe that 99 episodes have gone by just like that. Our aim from the very beginning has been to present the best British dishes with the hope of changing the perspectives of many around the world. With that in mind, and to celebrate this momentous occasion, I'll be showing you how to make a brilliantly British creation that you won't find anywhere else. Chicken complete, as the name suggests, involves boning a whole chicken and stuffing it with cabbage and mashed potatoes, yielding this stunning and complete meal. So, with the introductions made and your interest peaking, allow me to introduce the ingredients to you. For today's Brilliantly British Chicken Complete, you will need some Savoy cabbage, a potato, ideally some smoked bacon, finely chopped onion, some garlic, flour, chopped carrots, chopped celery, fresh parsley, butter, ideally homemade Brilliantly British butter. Follow the link on screen now to learn how to make your own. You will of course need a chicken for this chicken complete and you will need some wine followed by some salt and some pepper. That's it for the making of today's Brilliantly British chicken complete. But before you get started, before you do anything at all, Attend to your hydration by switching on your kettle, bring yourself a nice cup of hot tea so that you can sip on that whilst you cook. To start this celebratory dish, first ensure that your knives are razor sharp, as this will make the following task of butchering a chicken much, much easier. And well, speaking of the chicken, with it breast side down, score along the spine down to the bone. Pick a side, carefully prise out the oyster muscle, begin separating the flesh from the inner carcass, then with a little force dislocate the hip joint, which will need to be carefully carved out. Then progress by carving around the shoulder blade, leaving the wings alone for now. Then continuing by moving on around the bird by eventually separating the breast on that side. With half of the chicken separated, switch over Take your time to repeat the aforementioned steps, which should be easier as you've already completed one side until you're able to remove one half of the inner carcass, which should be placed in a bowl and set to one side ready for later on. With that done, continue by gradually prising out the breastbone, starting with the end with white cartilage, taking your time as there's no rush making intricate, precise cuts there also to reduce any waste. To remove the breastbone completely, cut through both joints connected to the wishbone, which you may find slightly fiddly, before placing the breastbone in the same bowl from earlier on. Lastly, to complete the filleting of the chicken, remove the wishbone by stripping away all of the flesh right down to the bone before slicing through the shoulder joint in order to free the wishbone. Now with the filleting complete, flatten and spread out the carcass, remove the wing tips, placing those in your allocated bowl. Then the next thing to do involves turning the chicken over to liberally season all over with salt and pepper, whilst using a spoon to rub the seasoning into all nooks and crannies. I then turn the chicken over this time placing it on top of foil before seasoning once more. With the seasoning complete, first spread finely minced raw onion and finely minced garlic thereafter before folding over and sealing the chicken in the foil to marinate in your fridge overnight. On the same day, with the chicken beginning to marinate in the fridge, begin to preheat your oven. Then, in a roasting tray, place roughly chopped onions carrots, celery, and optionally half a lemon, followed by the removed chicken carcass pieces. Drizzle the contents with some oil, shake them around, then slide the tray into your oven to roast until dark, dark brown. 
With the vegetables roasting, I began boiling some peeled potatoes, followed by some tea. Then into a pan, I dropped in a knob of butter. I cast in diced onions, diced carrots, chopped celery, a splash of water, a splash of white wine, and a helping of salt before stirring the contents and then covering, allowing the vegetables to cook over a medium high heat. Now, with some free time on your hands, I'd say take a tea break close to a screen in order to enjoy some of our amazing, brilliantly British content, making sure, of course, to like and subscribe. Once the vegetables have tenderized and little to no liquid remains in the pan, switch off your source of heat. The potatoes, once cooked, should be drained before sipping on some more tea. Then, following on from that, the potatoes should then be mashed before turning the mash into a bowl and mixing with a knob of butter, the cooked vegetables, some finely chopped parsley, an egg, and some flour. Finishing with a required helping of salt and pepper. I then prepared sheets of foil and baking paper, which I used to wrap, seal, and shape my mash before placing in my fridge to cool overnight. Finally, to conclude day one of two, remove your tray from the oven and allow it to cool completely overnight. Welcome back. To start the second and final part of this episode, core a whole cabbage before boiling it for a few minutes in hot water under a lid, using the time to possibly browse through the channel's other content with a tea in hand, of course. After a few minutes of cooking, remove the head of cabbage from your pot and then, when cool enough to handle, remove the leaves, pat them dry before prepping them by removing the thick spines and halving. With the leaves prepped, lay them out and pat them dry once more just in case before placing to one side for just a moment. At this point, recall your chicken, which now should be wonderfully aromatic and cover thoroughly with your leaves of cabbage on both flanks as well as down the middle. Thereafter, season with salt and pepper and well, if you didn't see this coming, you'll be in for a surprise. Unravel and position your somewhat solid bar of mashed potato in the middle of your chicken and then enclose the mash with the cabbage before using the foil underneath to encourage the cabbage and chicken to wrap around. Then gently shape the assembly before placing to one side for just a moment. Now, we'll need to thread an essential tool for the completion of this dish, namely a butcher's needle. So, cut a three to four meter length of butcher's twine, folding it in half and securing it with a knot. The twine should then be passed through the eye of the needle and then knotted once more to secure it in place. Now for the threading. Start by piercing through both sides of your chicken at least a centimeter away from the edges. Pull the twine through before repeating one to two centimeters further along, making sure to hold the chicken in place as your needle goes through. Progress in this way with a criss-cross pattern, tightening as you progress whilst making sure that the mashed potato remains evenly distributed within. As you progress, some mash may eke out and some cabbage leaves may be displaced. If this happens, then turn the chicken upside down in order to encourage the filling to sink back in, sealing the contents with more cabbage leaves wherever necessary and, of course, clean up any spills. You want to thread the bird up until you begin to stitch over the end of the chicken leaving an essential opening for the contents to expand and for steam to escape, a lesson I learned from a previous experience. With the contents sealed, gently roll and shape your ensemble in order to shape. Then securely bind the legs below the opening as this will help to maintain the chicken completes shape. I'll then postulate it before beginning to wrap extensively in bacon rashers as wrapping with bacon will keep the chicken moist as well as provide a crusty outer layer. With the body and legs of the chicken wrapped, turn the chicken over to bind, first fixing the wings in place before binding the rest of the assembly, 
strategically using the loop of twine to shape the chicken complete. And well, my dear friends, look at it. It hasn't even been roasted and it looks stunning. But before we do roast it, place it to one side for just a moment. Ah, before preceding, begin preheating your oven then into your tray of roasted bones and vegetables from the day before. If you're feeling generous, throw in some leftover bacon and a necessary helping of white wine. Then place it in your oven before we turn our attention back to the chicken complete. The chicken in preparation for roasting should be relocated onto an oven rack as this will allow all of the juices to trickle down into the tray of vegetables below. The chicken should therefore be placed into your oven above your oven tray to roast low and slow, which I dare say leaves you with ample time to plow through a considerable number of our episodes, helping us out too by liking and subscribing. Thank you. From time to time, check on the roast and probing it from time to time will enable you to determine when it's ready, having a minimum reading of 80 degrees C between the thighs and in the center. Once cooked, place the roast to one side, tented under some foil, allowing it time to rest whilst the last remaining elements are prepared. Switching off my oven, I then discarded the solid contents of my tray before passing my wine and meat dripping mixture through a sieve. I then poured a small amount of liquid into a pan at first before dissolving plain flour within, following by the addition of the rest of the liquid. The contents should then be whisked constantly over a medium heat until it shines and becomes glossy. And if necessary, finish your sauce with a light sprinkling of salt to taste. Perfect. To serve, remove the outer loops, tidy the centerpiece up here and there by removing the wings, then gently slice through to reveal the gorgeous cross section before serving. Now, with all that said and done, I think now is the perfect time for tasting, tasting, tasting. All right, we have sliced to show the beautiful cross section and plated and drizzled on our beautiful, beautiful sauce. So now in three, two, one. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Wow, this dish is just flavor, flavor, flavor. And so many different levels. Oh, the chicken is seasoned all the way through. I mean, if you can imagine meat being seasoned all the way through, the salt, the garlic, the onion, really penetrating into the flesh, which of course is due to it being left in the fridge overnight. The bacon adds a wonderful smokiness to it because I've particularly used smoky bacon. The mash on the inside is creamy, rich. You've got that subtle taste of parsley in there. You've got texture coming through the vegetables, coming through with the vegetables, the cabbage, the carrots, the onion, the celery. And then this sauce. This sauce, which consists mainly of the drippings from the chicken and the roasted vegetables and the bones. Oh, there's just so much flavor in here and on this plate as a whole and all of it works together. It's a marriage on a plate. So look, with all that being said, I hope this tasting session has proven to you that this is worthwhile and is worth the effort. So please, 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 as soon as possible, make this dish. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for allowing me to show you how to make chicken complete. Knowing that you loved this episode and all of the episodes thus far on this channel, don't forget to click the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification button so that you don't miss any of our new releases. Tell everyone you know about the Brilliantly British Food on this channel and follow us on all of the social media platforms that this channel is on and I will see you next time.